great Tuesday morning, you all. How are you all doing? Happy Tuesday. This is your girl, Shan. I am back as I promised, okay? <laughs> I hope each and every one of you had an amazing weekend. I hope you enjoyed the mothers. Mothers, I hope your Mother's Day was amazing. I know our time as family together was awesome. You know, went traded for nothing in the world. Love spending time with family, and that's something that we often encourage people to do. Um, as people start rolling in, because yes, your girl is back or whatever. Good morning, Natasha. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, lay some things out there and, and keep it real and honest like I always do. Today, I'm going to be talking about transparency when it comes to marriage and relationships. But before I get into that, um, God is and will be transitioning me and my husband on to some other things that's not fully laid out yet. I know it's going to have to do or it will be doing with marriage. Um, but I have to let you know, sadly, that probably around fall, um, Marriage Mornings with the Queen videos will be done. So um, around the fall. And so I'm just being obedient, allowing God to guide it and lead me. And when I thought about it, I was like, wow, I think I've been doing videos really since 2013 and really going into marriage about 2015, 2016. Good morning, Miss Dillian. So just want to let you all know about that, that come the fall, Marriage Morning with the Queens videos will not exist any longer. Hey, Marlene, how are you? Um, However, if you ever miss one of our radio shows, you can go to the podcast Buzz Sprout, B-U-Z-Z-S-P-R-O-U-T, search Marriage Mondays with the Kings, and you can hear all our previous or most of our previous um radio shows. However, if you've ever missed a marriage morning with the queen and it was an amazing topic and you like, dang, I want to go back and re-listen without having to scroll through all our social medias, you can go to our Marriage Mondays with the Kings YouTube page. So I just want to drop that news. I'll be dropping it. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more as the time come closer. And when God says, well done, my child. And you know, me and my husband move on to the next phase. But I'm going to be honest with y'all on today. You know, I did have some things um, to talk about and everything like that, but my heart is so heavy. It is so heavy on this morning. Um, I've been thinking about the baby girl from Houston. Um, I, I usually don't get caught up with the comments and the different things like that, but of course, anything having to do with relationships and stuff like that, I was like, oh my God. Hey, cousin Felicia. And so my heart is so, so heavy. I cannot stand to hear something, anything terrible happening to children. And so let me get into this transparency about marriage and relationship, right? I remember when me and my husband first started, um, even doing our radio show, we caught a lot of flack about people and they would say, you know, we don't understand why you and your husband will put information out there about y'all's marriage. Why would y'all talk about this, that, and other, and blah, blah, blah. And of course, we were doing it being obedient for, uh, for God because that's what God placed on our heart to do. Have God ever placed anything on your heart to do as an individual or in general, good morning, sister Lolo being married. Have God ever placed anything on your heart to do as your marriage mission or just individual? And you just haven't been doing it and God's been whooping your behind spiritually. See, me and my husband had enough spiritual butt whooping, so we went ahead and did what thus says the Lord. And I thank God for me and my husband doing this, talking about marriage and everything like that. I thank God for every up and down that we've been through. Now, I'm going to answer a question or two. A young lady on, on social media, you know, this is not in the counseling room or whatever. She asked this question. She said, why is it that you always, you never hear about the bad things in marriage. You always hear about the good things. You always hear about the positive things. You always see people putting up their social media pics and how much they love their spouse, which I encourage you to continue to do that. But you never hear about the bad things. The only thing that you hear is marriages have their ups and downs, which is true. And so I set up and I've been thinking about that probably for about four days now. Now I'm going to say this before I get into what I was thinking. Please never use me and my husband's videos or uh, that we do or our radio shows as counseling sessions, please. 
because as a counselor, it is total, a totally different. It's more personable, more intimate, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a therapist. So please don't ever do that. If you feel that you need some help in your marriage, go and get help. If you feel that you need marriage in your individual realm, go and get help. Okay. So let me go ahead and say that, you know, as, as a counselor, go and get the help that you need. Don't allow just what we do to, to let it be an added bonus. Let it be some sugar on top of the work that you're already doing. So getting back to this young lady and what she was saying, good morning, Dalisha, when she was saying, why do you never see the downs of marriage? Because if we look at our our world and we look at a society, I'm not saying that people should be out there voicing all the negative things in their marriage. I'm not saying that. If we look at society in the world, the only thing that it paints is a fake, a fake facade of perfection, a fake facade of perfection. Hey, Ursula. And so we, when it, let me give some good old country examples. When it comes to beauty, unless you look like this, then you're not acceptable and society will reject you and society will jump on you about it. Unless your marriage look like this, which happen to be a facade, then society will reject you. So what we tend to do is we tend to try to keep this perfect. No, 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 no. Go get help. Uh, for, for those, all of us, whether you single or not start to love who you are, start to appreciate who God created you to be, start to appreciate your marriage. Like we always talk about how the word of God says, renewing your mindset daily. See, people don't want to talk about the real things in marriage and people will be in the amen corner. Like people has always been supporting me in the amen corner until I happen to turn down the road and then I'm crazy and she don't know what she's talking about. See, what I like about God is God allowed me and my husband to dig up some roots, to dig up some things. When you sit up here in your marriage and you wonder, why is my marriage not better than this? Why do we feel like we're just stagnant? God, I thought marriage was supposed to be better than this, but you sitting up here faking like things are okay instead of addressing the main issues that are in your marriage. The only reason why I could talk about that is because this is what me and my husband do. We are not hypocrites in the sense that we're going to set up here and get before the people. We're going to speak over the airways and all this kind of stuff about how marriage should be and what it should look like. And then uh, we sitting up here and we're doing the exact opposite. Y'all could talk to our oldest son. He could, he could share with you because see, the oldest child always know the struggles in the marriage that the parents go through the true ups and downs, unless the parents are that good at hiding it. And even with that, then kids never learn that, oh, sometimes there can be some disturbance. Now I ain't saying act a, a stone cold fool. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just like when you go in a friend's house, you can feel the tension that, uh-oh, something ain't right up in here. Let me go on ahead and, and get these shoes that I said I was going to borrow. Hey, Cousin Kim, let me get on up out of here. I know I missed y'all too, Cousin. Let me get on up out of here. People don't like when you're transparent. But how can we not grow if we are not doing the things of God? See, me and my husband doing what God told us to do, which is this, and which is the radio show, and we made every excuse not to do it, it helped to grow our marriage. And see, a lot of us are stagnant in our marriage because we're not being obedient to what it is that God has dropped in our heart to do. Now, some might say, good morning, Keila Bushan. I don't know God, and I don't know, and him dropping in my heart. How can you tell and all this other, you have to have a relationship with God. You have to have a relationship with the creator. And this is the thing that they just ultimately gets me. How is it that we can expect the ways of the world to show us how our marriage should prosper and how amazing it should be and all these other type of things. And they're showing a facade. They're showing fakery when God was the one that created marriage. Have you ever heard, and me and my husband had this conversation, of anyone or anything else besides God that has created marriage? So why would we not go to the creator? And so when me and my husband be transparent, yes, we caught a lot of flack. Like I've said before, we've caught a lot of flack from the church. We've caught a lot of uh, flack from people that don't go to church. Y'all shouldn't be telling y'all's business. But guess what? God allowed me and my husband to go through the things that we did because if we wouldn't have went through the things, we couldn't be talking about it now. If we weren't talking about it now, people's marriages and mindsets wouldn't have been changed. And see, that's how God uses us. So transparency is not a bad thing. Or whatever, but you should only move when God places in your heart to move. Let me give another good example. 
when you have people, <laughs> I'm going to use my girl Natasha on here, right? I'm going to use my girl Natasha as an example. So say Natasha is, is she has a business. She's a business owner. She owns a boutique. I see she's doing an amazing job. Every time I drive past her business, baby, it is booming. And then I set up her and decide, you know what? Let me go and open a boutique. Hey, Wendy, let me go and open a business. But guess what? God didn't call me to do that. And my situation will fail. We need to get to the point to where we can learn from each other and we can grow. We can do an iron sharpening iron moment. But I... Whatever God has for Natasha's purpose is not my purpose. So just like with us, a lot of people ask us, you and your husband been doing this marriage thing for a while. Why is it all of a sudden that everybody else is coming out and they trying to be marriage experts, but you never heard anything about it? And I said, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to knock what God may or may not have told them to do. Maybe they jumped on the bandwagon. Maybe not. But only we can bring it the way that God gives it to us to bring. Okay. Let me take it. Let me take it in one more direction. One more direction. Let me go back to what I was talking about when I first came in about my heart being heavy. I'm not going to judge this young lady. I'm not going to judge anybody that's in this situation because the word of God says, judge not lest ye be judged. And also the word of God says, especially in the New Testament, when you sum it up, hey, Toy News, we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to pray for one another. We're supposed to lift up our brother and sister. So I just encourage you to pray for this young lady, but I'm going to talk about some things. As I was listening to this story unfold about this baby girl from Houston, um, I think her name is Malia, I think. Um, I was sitting up thinking about, they were talking about the relationships and what has unfolded. And I really don't know. And I usually don't get into situations, but it touched my heart because this baby girl that lost her life. What burns me is the fact that from what is being said, and I don't know how true it is. There was an argument between the two and because he was upset with his ex fiance, his girlfriend or whatever, he took it out on the baby girl cause he wanted her to hurt. He wanted the ex fiance to hurt. See, this is why I talk about counseling, how people need to go and get help. Stop staying in toxic situations because you can't blame God when we allow ourselves to move out of the will of God. This is why Matthew 6 and 33 is so important. This is why we got to go before God because see, it used to be back in the day that, that when situations like this took place and you talking about a relationship, this wasn't the baby girl's daddy. And even if it was daddy, sometime they, you know, mama and daddy snap off too. But what I'm saying is this, we, we really need to move the way that God desires for us to move. We really need to get closer back to God. Even the things that we do in our marriage when it may be bumpy at times. Because see, back in the day, a person may have gotten upset and left. Back in the day, they may have killed the person that they supposedly love. Back in the day, they may have punished your children by abusing them physically, verbally, mentally, and sexually. You see what I'm saying? But now it's coming to the point where people are killing the babies. Does anybody, is anybody feeling me on this this morning? This is crazy. It is crazy. And there's so many comments, of course, of things that are being said. Um, some of the things is, you know, and I was sitting up thinking about this too, is that sometimes we as women want to be in a, a relationship so bad. We want a man so bad. And y'all know me, I'm just going to keep it real. We want a man so bad that even if that takes something happening to our children, then at least I got me a piece of man that I can lay up with, but I'm not judging. However, we as women need to know our worth. We need to know that we are fearfully and wonderfully uh, made. We need to know how marvelous God's works are within us and who we are. You see what I'm saying? And, and I'm not blaming the man. Uh, I'm not blaming the woman. The only thing I'm saying is we need to get back closer to God because the ones who are suffering in these situations are the innocent children. They didn't ask for this. I remembered and just thinking about the situation and that's how the circumstances unfold because a question was asked about this as well. Let me go ahead and kind of put it out there to y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Some of y'all been in these situations, especially as single parents, okay? But when should... The person in whom you're dating meet your children. 
Now see, back in my day, and I'm not trying to act like I'm super old, but back in my day, unless you were serious and about to get ready to say I do, baby, you didn't bring nobody around your kids. You just didn't bring everybody around your kids. You see what I'm saying? That was back in my day. I know how protective I was of my son, and I'm not going to lie on today. People know me. I don't play about mine. You see what I'm saying? When my son met my husband, we were already married. Okay, but I was so protective of my son because that's all I had. You see what I'm saying? I sacrificed for my baby. But when he met my husband, we were already married. And that was because we were living in two different countries at that time. I won't get into the dynamics of that. But what I'm saying is, why is it or how did it come to the point in the world that we just want a piece of somebody that we're willing to just bring every time Dick and Harry, Susan, Jane and Jenny around our doggone kids? I understand it's being a single parent is hard. Been there, done that. You see what I'm saying? Good morning, Alex. Being a single parent, it is very hard. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and somebody has said this and I said, wow, this is so true. We get wrapped up into a fairy tale family of what we want to have that we're willing to put up with just anything and lower our standards to just any kind of way. And we're even willing to lie to say, yeah, this is my child's daddy. This is my husband. This is my wife. You a whole lie and you live in a fairy tale. That's not what it is. If you didn't go and do the things that needed to be done, then how can you say that? Yes, anybody can step into a child's life and can raise that individual. But, but can I be transparent about marriage and relationships? We need to get to the point where we stop living these fairy tale lies because guess who gets hurt in it? This is why I was so um, protective about my son. And this is just me talking. I don't know who going through this on a day and I'm not trying to point no fingers, but this is why I was protective because this is one thing that I could, I could tell. And I remember growing up and seeing it in my family, more so my paternal side of where a man would come in or a woman would come in and get what happens with that child. The child gets connected to that man or that woman, especially if that man or the woman start calling them daughter or calling them son and you're there to help celebrate the birthdays and all that kind of stuff. And then guess what happened when mama, mama and the, the, the boyfriend break up or the boyfriend and the dad, I mean the girlfriend and the daddy break up. Then they just take off and they goes and guess who left in the wind flapping that child. And all they're used to, hey, um, Aunt Carla, all they're used to is people coming in and out of their life. And then you sit up here and you wonder why it is when you get married that you repeat that same pattern. That you done married this person and this ain't working and I don't like it. So I'm going to go marry that person and then that ain't working. And you done been married six or seven times or you're dating. And you're and you're you're afraid to commit to somebody, so you have six or seven people that you're trying to date at one time, all up in this polygamous situation. You see what I'm saying? And none of that being of God. That's why I was so protective. The man who was gonna be in my son's life had to let me know. You see what I'm saying? Had to let me know that he was serious about being not only in my life, but I, this is a package deal right here. See, a lot of us is not doing this on this day and time. You just let any, any riffraff in just so you can say you got a piece of a girlfriend, a piece of a woman, or a piece of a man. But when you got kids, so I'm going to ask my parents this, and I'm not knocking or judging. I'm going to ask my parents this, especially my single parents. When are you going to start being a security guard for your, for your kids? When are you going to stop sitting in baby girls on your various boyfriends laps? Oh yes. Transparency on today. If you can't handle it, keep on scrolling because this God in these last months before he allowed me to end marriage mornings with the queen is going to allow me to take this thing on the deepest level possible. Okay. We're going to revive and do some CPR in this situation. But in order for us to do that, we got to, we got to go deep. When my fellow men, because you got three or four kids and the mama up and left or she done moved on and she decided she don't want no kids and stuff and she don't want to be mama. She want to go live her best life, but she didn't abandon with you with the kids and you bringing every riffraff female in and out these kids lives. When are we going to start getting back to the point to where we protect our children? Okay. I've even known mothers that you will allow your boyfriend to sleep with your daughter just so he won't leave you. Just so you can still say you have a piece of man. You look the other way like you don't know what's happening in that next room next door. 
<laughs> oh yeah, your girl, she ain't gonna be bringing it. So I advise you, these videos going forward, baby, if this is messing with your shine, though, your spirit all up in there, baby, don't click on it 7.30 in the morning Central Standard Time. Don't do that. Because it's time for us to stop making a mockery out of marriage. It's time for us to stop making a mockery out of these babies. These babies are getting hurt because us adults who are operating in a childlike mind are allowing these babies to get hurt. You see what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm not judging the young lady in Houston. I don't know the whole situation. Hey, Lisa, I wasn't there or whatever the case may be. Only thing I'm saying is quit rocking a fairy tale family in your imagination and looking the other way blindly just so you can have what you call a piece of happiness which ultimately is not and then you sit up here and you wonder why your kids get grown and they don't want nothing to do with you mama or daddy they don't want nothing to do with you mama and daddy even if you are married you sit up here and wonder why people are getting married broken that's why i go back to being speaking from a therapist, I'm not doing no counseling right now when I tell y'all this, but I want y'all to know this. Go get the help you need, okay? All these little cliches, especially that we've had in the black community, African-American community, whatever you want to call us community. Oh, you weak. Oh, you crazy. If you go get some help, quit allowing yourself to be tormented internally and go get the help you need. Because what we are doing as a people, and I'm not just talking about black people, now I'm talking about all people. What we're doing as a people is we're passing that hurt and that dysfunction on to, to other generations. We can't set up here and show our children what a healthy marriage look like if we don't go and get the help that we need. You see what I'm saying? Let me take it to a physical aspect because some of y'all get sensitive when I bring it up from a mental aspect. So let me take it to a physical aspect. How can you sit up here and preach out your mouth and tell your children that they need to eat healthy and they need to run and they need to do all these things when you sitting up here eating every ham hock, every neck bone, every all this other kind of stuff. You got a whole uh, a gallon Ziploc bag full of medication. You wheezing every time you walk up a flight of steps, but you try to tell them what that what it is that they need to do, but you doing the polar opposite. Okay, that's the same thing. You passing on because you sitting up here with diabetes, high cholesterol. You didn't had a uh, full triple bypass, if not quadruple bypass surgeries. You sitting up here with all these things. You about to pass out if you turn around or stand up too fast. Do you not understand? That is passing on the same unhealthy habits to the generations to come. That's the same thing with our mental. We can't have the best blessed marriage that we want to. And let me holler at my church folks because you know I always got some for my fellow church folks. Yes, God can do. <laughs> and he is able to do. But at the same time, faith without works is dead. We can have faith in God. Just like we have faith in that doctor that give us all them gallon pills of medicine. If you want a better marriage, you can have faith in that same therapist too. But see, what you got to do is pray for God to lead you to the therapist that you and your husband need to see that's going to be in that thing with y'all that's going to work that thing out with y'all and you can't be and I'm going to say this and I'm not saying this as a therapist I'm saying this let me put back on the radio personality hat boop 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 for y'all be trying to report me and say I'm unprofessional this is radio personality hat you can't set up her and say that you're going to be committed to something but then when the going gets tough your tail get gone you see what I'm saying? You can't say that. You can't say that you're going to do the work that you need to do because things are going to get uncovered while you in your counseling session. But as soon as it get heated, you leave because you realize that the problem may be you when all the while you thought it was your spouse. Let's talk about it on today. I'm so tired of seeing people pass down hurt. We cannot have healthier generations to come. Because let me tell you, in the Old Testament, to have lineages of children was something. You see what I'm saying? What does your lineage look like? What do your lineage of the past look like? We all got dysfunctional family members and all that. How many of y'all are game changers? What do you want your lineage going forward look like? It may be toxic in the past, but baby, it don't have to be toxic going forward. So somebody needs to go get some help on today. Quit trying to talk about that you got it. Oh, I got it. I got it. But your marriage has been messed up for the past 15, 20 years. No, you don't got it. Go sit your tail down before somebody, whether it be some clergy or whether it be some mental health providers or whatever that can help you. If your mental is messed up and I don't know what the young man or whatever the case may be, because like I said, I don't know the situation, but when 
somebody in their mind thinks to hurt a child, you grind up a child. Okay, let me keep it real on this morning. That lets me know that the mental wasn't right. When you have somebody whose mental is horrible, that means that person need to go get some help and y'all need to go get some help. Quit blaming God because you decide to get into a toxic relationship, to get into a toxic marriage, and you decide to stay there. That's not God. Because God, I'm sure, has sent many people to tap you on your shoulder and say, brother, you need to leave this. This is toxic. Sister, you need to leave this. This is toxic. But see, this is the one last thing I'm going to say before I get ready to go that God put in my mind this morning. I said, oh my God, you are so right. I never thought about it like this. When you are in a marriage or you're in a relationship that is beneficial for you, that's amazing for you, we want to throw that away. We want to push that person away. But think about the person that's in a toxic relationship, that's in a toxic marriage. They stay in it because something in their mind tells them that they can fix this individual in whom they're with, who is causing them more harm than good. Something in their mind tells them that you can change this individual for the better. So that's why I'm going to stay in this toxic marriage and in this toxic relationship. Something in their mind says, everybody else is telling me to leave, but I'm going to stay. So why is it? That we as a people can stay in something toxic because we want to try to make it work when we as a people on the flip side are in something amazing, but we don't want to give no effort to make it work. It takes both to make it work, not just one pulling the weight. I'm trying to make this marriage work. I'm trying to make this family work. Baby, would you go to counseling with me? Now I ain't going to no counseling. I ain't crazy. They ain't going to be up in there talking about me when you really don't want your marriage if you don't want no help. Shan can sit up her Monday through Friday, five days a week from 7.30 to 7.50, 8 o'clock, whatever time that God puts on my heart. And I can talk all day. Me and my husband can come on our radio show every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on KRGN 98.5 FM The Rock. And we can talk every Monday. But baby, if you're not willing to do the work and you're not willing to change, let me go ahead and be transparent with you. Nothing is going to change. Okay? We can't change y'all's situation. And I can't stand when people, because Lord help me, Jesus, I can't stand when people try to sit up here and that's how the devil use people and say, oh yeah, the king's up here, they preach a time about this and this and this when it come to marriage and blah, 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 but they own family is going through and this and this and this. That's from an ignorant person, no disrespect, who happened to be single and you don't know what it's like to be married. Because if you do, you know, I can't fix nobody else's marriage and my husband can't fix nobody else's marriage. The only thing we can do is preach and say what it is that God has placed on our heart when it comes to marriage. So your girl, she ain't going to be so deep. Baby, y'all going to need some rain boots going forward. I'm telling you, in these last few months, because come the fall, like I say, your girl is not going to be doing these videos anymore because God is calling me and my husband to a whole nother, and we're preparing right now for the next transition. So it's going to be deep. It's going to be real. It's going to be in your face. The world ain't like that. The world like to give you, they, they like to give you sh uh, 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 salt and call it sugar. You see what I'm saying? Something is not going to help you grow, you know, but God has called me and my husband <laughs> to talk about some topics that going to make you grow. Now, like I always say, we don't know what's going on in your house. We don't know, sir, if you sitting up here living off this woman line of this woman talking about that you gonna marry her when you ain't got no intentions. You just uh, a hobosexual, as the word of the day said on our page not too long ago. You just happy to have a roof over your head. Uh, uh, we don't know, uh, ma'am, what you got going on over here with you to push your kids aside just to have a piece of man because any real man that comes into your situation and he knows you a single mom, he's gonna be a man that's gonna be inclusive. You see what I'm saying? To say, uh uh, if we gonna be a fan. Family, we going to do it right. I'm not going to have you pick me over your children. That's a real man. You see what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on with you. You know what I'm saying? Bruh, when you set up her and you picking these toxic women over your children because a real woman won't keep you from your children. You see what I'm saying? Some of us need to learn how to grow up. I understand that the children... 
Been there, done that. The, uh, the children are under the mindset of a trifling mama, which was your trifling baby mama, trifling ex-wife. But a real woman will be praying for your children, praying for your ex-wife, your toxic baby mama, and trying to bring that whole situation together. Where are my real women at? Okay? I'm not going to have you, even though I become your wife, yes, I do become first, but at the same token, I'm going to be that wife that's going to ensure that we going to do everything possible. But husband, I need you to make sure that you don't allow them kids to disrespect me. Okay. As I sounded out all of that word, but I'm going to be a real woman and I'm going to make sure that we bring this all together and it be inclusive. Some of y'all sitting up with some trifling women and you sitting up with some trifling men who are making you choose between your children, between your children and them. And you trying to weigh both. Hey, Celeste, you trying to weigh both. Oh, I don't know. No, I need you to man up, sir. I need you to man up. Since you always walk around beating on your chest, talking about you the man of the house. I don't know who I'm talking to on the day. And God got me on the road talking about, oh, I'm the man of the house. And I rule my house with an iron fist. Well, you need to get your affairs in order. And don't let your disrespectful kids disrespect your wife. Just like your disrespectful mama, your disrespectful sister. Same over here, ma'am. You need to get your disrespectful family members in order to make this thing work. So going forward, <laughs> I need you all to come in with your cup of coffee on the, on, on, on the mornings at 7.30 Central Standard Time of your cup of tea and, and, and continue to chime in. Continue to please comment because what I like, and I promise you this is my last closing as the pastor says. <laughs> What I like is I like the connections that you all are making. There are friendship connections on Facebook, even though you have never met each other in person. And I like that. You see what I'm saying? I like the fact that you all are promoting each other's businesses and you don't even know each other because you're friending each other because y'all the coffee crew and y'all always come in. So thank y'all so much for doing that. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate that. It does my heart good, the connections that are being made, the God divine connections. So <clears throat> your girl, she ain't going to be back with on tomorrow with whatever God placed on my heart. If you missed it, go back <laughs> and watch it. Thank you all for taking time out of y'all's day. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and for you all who served in the military, you know anything about this, baby, warn your people. If you sure they might want to bring a cat, a, a, a flag vest, that's what we used to call it in the military. Cause she ain't going to be shooting some rounds down range, honey, some grenades and everything. Get your Kevlar, your flag vest. Cause we going to battle when it comes to these marriages. So y'all have a blessed day. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Be a blessing to somebody today. Not a curse. Your girl, she ain't going to be back with you all tomorrow. Whatever it is, God plays in my heart. So God bless you and blessings to you. Thank you.